The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Broadcasting live from the Toscano Cigar Soundstage in Salem, New Hampshire, USA. And broadcasting around the world, this is the Cigar Authority. Transmitting since 2010, the Cigar Authority is the longest lasting cigar podcast ever. Grab a cigar and light them up, light them up, light them up. This is the Cigar Authority. Light them up, light them up, light them up, everybody. Saturday, February 24th, 2024, Jess Coleman and Brandon Marsh from Big Sky Cigars joins us live in studio today. We're going to find out a little about a cigar company with big plans and the sky's the limit. Welcome, everybody, to the Cigar Authority. And you are listening to the Cigar Authority, broadcasting from the Twist Ranch this week. Is that it? Now in its 14th year, making it the longest continually running cigar podcast. Awarded the Ambassadors of Cigars by Cigar Journal Magazine. Awarded the Top 10 Educational Podcast by Podbean four years in a row. The Cigar Authority is the most listened to cigar podcast in the world. Cigar Radio at its finest. The Cigar Authority is a proud member of the United Podcast Network. And you catch the podcast on demand at any time or our uh, daily blog Jonathan, at thecigarauthority.com. Your fans are out already. They say the guy to Mr. J's left is what Jonathan would look like if he were a man. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> and That's from Ryan. That's Brandon Marsh, and next to him is Jess Coleman. He's on my right, by the way. Learn your lefts and rights. <laughs> what, baby on there? On, on, oh, yeah. Yeah. Was he talking about Dave? That's what I thought at first. And then I'm like, Dave's not I'll take it. I'll take on his it. head? I'll take it. Anyway, Jess Coleman, Brandon Marsh are uh, from Montana, and they have a uh, little cigar company called Big Sky Cigars. We're going to learn all about that. Welcome aboard. Thanks for coming up. Thank you for having us. It's yeah. a pleasure. All right. You guys travel a long way to get here. We appreciate it in the wintertime, uh, although it's not all that nice in Montana. Did, did you come on horses or wagon train? Covered or? wagon. Covered, Covered wagon. wagon. Yeah. yeah. Wagons East. And they brought presents. Too. They did. That they was did. exciting. It is. So we'll, we'll get to that later on. Uh, so friends? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We, uh, so we met, uh, I don't know, 15 years ago. Uh, we used to work in the energy industry together in okay. North Dakota, Montana, during the the boom in the Bakken Shale, <laughs> and uh, we were contract laborers digging ditches and uh, putting pipelines in the ground. All right, huh. and then you said, "Let's go in business together," which nothing can really go wrong with that of two no. friends becoming partners with uh, in business. <laughs> right. uh, totally smooth. Yeah, yeah. really. <laughs> no, How, has it been so far? So good. Yeah, there were some rough seas every yes. once in a while. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, full disclosure. Uh, it's been, you know, over the last five or so years, uh, for the most part, it's been pretty good. It's been five uh, years? Yeah. Oh, all right. I only know you guys for years. a couple of years. It takes a while to get out of Montana with all a right. cigar brand. Um, but yeah, no, there's, uh, it's, been, it's been great. We've had, in the last year, it's probably been the toughest as we've had our steepest growth curve and a lot That's of decisions it. to make. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brandon went full-time into the business. Uh, before that, we both worked full-time jobs and, mm-hmm. and all right. ran the business. So. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, sacrifice on Brandon's part, and uh, you know, with that comes a lot of tough decisions and, and some arguments. I feel yeah. like I won probably most of them. Yeah, you win. <laughs> well, you are the president, right? You right. are the president. He's <laughs> the right. vice president. Oh, right. yeah. He's full time. You're part time. Right. This is you got to work on. Well, this. I, I would imagine you guys were good enough friends. When you get to a certain level of friendship, you have to have a little hatred for each other as well. <laughs> right. And that is that's the part where yeah. I, I could see people being that close and being able to go into business and have some longevity. Uh, Jonathan, the audience says Big Sky looks like they need to send Mr. Jonathan to the train station. Oh, <laughs> I don't know what that means. A little Yellowstone uh, <laughs> connection. Yeah, they would you need say to be killed. I was assuming people were going to go broke back mountain. There we go. <laughs> but he took his hat off, so it, yeah. it, all those jokes are out the window. Clean yeah. it up. Check that out on the on the thumbnail of how he normally looks, but we couldn't get the hat on with the head fet, headsets. The headset barely fits on that freaking yeah. thing. <laughs> I'll, I'll put a, I'll put the hat back on for you if you want. It's up but to you. I don't really want to to get that broke back mountain going quite yet. No, not yet. You ever notice that every time you go to the beach, it's high tide? I think it has its own gravitational pull. <laughs> I got a big dome. Yeah, that's that's for sure. Oh no! All right, let's light up a cigar anyway, Jonathan. What are we going to smoke here? Well, Dave. 
Today's first cigar is the Big Sky Bitter Root. It's manufactured in Nicaragua by the Takasa factory, Takasa SA, for Big Sky Cigar Company. The size we're smoking is 6x54. It's wrapped in a Habano wrapper, and the binders and fillers are both Nicaraguan. It is part of the Cigar Authority care package. A single will set you back $12.19, and a box of 20 is $215.99, dropping the single price down to just $10.80 on twoguyscigars.com. If you're too far away from a brick-and-mortar retailer that carries it, try twoguyscigars.com. That's the number two, guyscigars.com. Okay, a uh, bit of root, flower or uh, mountain range? So, uh, uh, both. Um, so, it's actually the Bitterroot Valleys, where I grew up in Montana, actually where Yellowstone is filmed uh, mm. in the Bitterroot Valley. Uh, it's also the state flower of Montana, and then there's the Bitterroot Mountain Range. All right, huh. so we get both, both in one. It's a lot of bitterness. Yeah, it's time to cut our cigar. The official cutting brought to you by Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo is the brand, while all other brands were raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal S-chip tax, and actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. Excellence. So, we said there is, this is the Toro size. This is the size. So this is what's <laughs> unique about these guys, is this is the bitter root, this is the cigar, there are no other sizes. That's mm, correct. Correct. Of every line you have. Correct. So uh, as we work to, you know, grow our footprint and, uh, you know, spread the story, Montana cigar story, I was, it was difficult, right, getting into brick and mortars. And so uh, we found that uh, developing uh, a handful of really, really quality cigars and work and focusing on the branding made more sense than uh, bringing in different sizes in terms of getting our foot in the door and getting some space on some shelves. So it's something that we'll be looking at down the road. Um, and uh, you know, I think that we will likely do that for some of our more popular brands, but that's where we're at today. Okay. I've only had it one time, but have you ever had Cristal champagne? Yes. Have you ever soaked golden raisins? In the crystal, and then no, but them. my mother drops a raisin in her champagne. Really, this it makes it more bubbly. Contra, oh. when it starts getting less bubbly, you drop a raisin in. She's so sophisticated. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. The cold draw is that that uh, balance between dry and sweet between those two flavors, the uh, champagne and the golden. But raisin. not bitter at all. Yet the name is bitter. And then sometimes, like, you, you saw Ed looking at this and say, oh, it's probably citrusy, looking right. at a color or something. Yeah. I would worry that the consumer would say, oh, bitter root, it's probably a bitter cigar, yet it's not bitter at all. It's not right. bitter at all. Okay. Um, Ryan Seneca says on the cold draw, it's like if you left lemon pepper in the Montana sun for five years and then sniffed a plate of it with your mouth open. Wow. So I guess a little you citrus any of the pepper. Shit, I don't you just know. say cigars taste like smoke? <laughs> he, he's got a great palate. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to light our cigar today with the Excalibur by Lotus. The Excalibur by Lotus is a single action lighter with two jets angled for pinpoint accuracy. Those jets are fueled by the patented Vertigo big-ass tank. But wait, there's more. On the back of the lighter, you have a full-sized no. deep V cutter. I was studying that. Does that somehow split the big ass tank into two separate parts? Oh no, no, no. no the no. big ass tank big carries ass tank, throughout. It's it's in there. All right. Uh, they have some serious technology. Uh, <laughs> and on the side, in case you just weren't in the mood for a deep V, oh, you got wow. a bullet punch that flips out as well. Both cutters that Dave hates built into <laughs> a lighter that you will love. For thirty nine ninety nine, that is the Excalibur by Lotus. All right, so you guys are me real men, men's men, out there, and I'd say we're big sky guys. Big sky mm -hmm. guys. All right, we'll go big sky guys. But you, that sounds way less gay. <laughs> you fish and you hunt, and I don't know. You look like man, man, man's. And <laughs> Jonathan is saying when he clicks this button, a single action happens, which he's clicking the button. I'm saying then the, the, the user does one action. Then the door opens. Then the flame lights up. Dual action? I'd call it single action. Really? Oh, you're kissing Shut it. Shut 
down. You wow. tried putting me on blast in front of our guests, and you got shut down, and you deserve Because on a gun... That would be two actions. It yeah, but it's not a gun. It's a lighter, and I'm the <laughs> doesn't man. matter. I get to decide what everything is as the first person to do it. Is the a- when you say single action, is it the action of the lighter or the action of the person? I the would action say of the person. It's a single action of the person. Correct. Is that light a single action to do? Good. Hit it and tell me if that's single action or double action. Single. Wow. Totally wrong. Huh. But it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're our guest, but you're totally wrong. Oh my god. <laughs> That's a double action. Two Appreciate things happen. That. You push yeah. down and two things happen. Two double things. action. Yeah. I, I don't but care I only how does push down once. You push down once and two things happened. You, you have a gun. See, In this case, me. I would say for every single action, there's two reactions. Oh. oh. You didn't see that coming, did you? I like that. Yeah. <laughs> I right. like that. He and I have gotten along since he came in. All right. We so connected. Is, all right. We've seen what's happened. So <laughs> Montana. You know, you, you, most people don't think of Montana and say cigars, Montana. Of course, cigars, they say Tampa, Florida, Miami, Florida, or Honduras, Nicaragua, Dominican Republic. But there is a big history of cigars in Montana. Absolutely, yeah. So when we uh, decided to start the brand, uh, the, the initial thought was, hey, why isn't there a Montana cigar brand? And we jumped in, uh, did some research, and to our surprise, uh, in the early 1900s, there was over 100 cigar factories in Montana, hmm. which makes absolute no, you know, no, no sense at all on the front end. After looking and at that... And we're talking small population. Right, yeah. right. And so um, really what, you know, through reading and research we found is that, you know, the two big industries at the time were the railroad, right? So building the railroad, operating the railroad, and then uh, copper mining around Butte and Montana, or Butte and Anaconda, Montana. At one point, Anaconda... Um, don't want none unless you got buns, hun. True. Uh, they exported most of the copper in the United States was coming out of Anaconda at one point. So with that became, uh, came an um, influx of migrant labor. And as those industries ebbed and flowed, those folks peeled off, had the know-how, had the connections to bring the tobacco in, and started rolling just for the general populace. And from there it grew. And at one point in 1915, uh, the Garnier Cigar Factory in Livingston, Montana, was producing 40,000 sticks a month. Wow. You, you're talking about, in those days, 250,000 people? Living yeah, in- I'm not sure what the exact population would, would be, but you know, Montana just broke a million within the last three years, total mm. population. So I would imagine... Over 100 cigar factories... Hmm. And and then back day that day and I did some research about yeah. two hundred fifty thousand people with a hundred cigar factories. So it seems good. You'd have plenty of cigars. Yes. Well, you got plenty of railroads going through there, yeah, so you, uh, you can export and get to either side of the country fairly quickly. Was there ever a big name cigar brand or something that came from there? No. The only uh, there's a few small names. The the one that uh, was producing forty thousand sticks, the Garnier Company, uh, they had a cigar called the Montana Sport. At one point, there's a gentleman that's tried to bring that back a little bit, uh, but that's really, you know, in terms of uh, brand name, the most notable that we could find, which is still, of course, very regional. Um, You know, one of the largest cigar markets during that era was New York. And uh, from what we've read, uh, at one point, so a short period, there was more cigars going to New York out of Montana, likely out of the Garnier factory, than there was coming up from Cuba. Mm. All right, Brandon, question for you. Big Sky, why Big Sky? You know, Jess and I threw around some business ideas or business names. Yeah. And uh, we just wanted a a name that was going to represent Montana and that clicked with what we like to do. We love hunting and fishing. Yeah. uh, Big Sky was a name that felt really represented our brand and what we like to do. All right. And then you go from, that's the name of the company, and then there becomes different um, lines on it. There is no Big Sky cigar. Correct. Yeah. Right. So every, our core line is our Montana River Series. We have the Yellowstone, Bighorn, Madison, Bitterroot, and then finally we re- released the Blackfoot last year at PCA. Yeah, yeah. So those are all five rivers that Jess and I love to fish. And uh, we have a, some other cool products. We have a Montana fly box that comes with uh, yeah. some flies and a cutter and uh, hmm. some cigars. And Jess also helped release, a, it's called a Mad Minnow fly box. It fits in your pocket. There's eight flies and four Mad Minnows and... It's a, it's a cool product. First product, I saw you guys two years ago at the trade show. That was the first time you guys were showing. 
at the trade show, right, two years ago? At PCA. Okay. PCA. So uh, I go there, and the you guys are small little teeny boots sitting there. And um, Ed Santa Maria is, is with me. He's the buyer at two guys. And we're walking around, and I, I turned him into the buyer many, many years ago because I – I'm, I'm like the easiest mark in the world. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah I give them a shot. You try this. Yeah, we got to end up doing it. So we pre-plan everything nowadays, and we each get one shot of it's out of the blue. It came from nowhere. You get one shot. And I walk over, and I see the Mad Minnow. And I go, well, this is interesting. And to me, it looks like the little minnow that's there, and it's a little small. If you guys know a, a Toro Fuente short story, it's even thinner than that mm -hmm. is. And I made a big mistake years ago when the Hemingway series came out for a Toro Fuente. Uh, I took all the sizes except the short story because I thought it was ridiculous. And the guy was begging me, please, mm -hmm. take, take one box of the short story in there. I go, it's ridiculous. Nobody's going to buy it, which turned out to be their biggest seller of, of all. Right. So here I am looking at that and remembering that, and here you guys are just starting out, and I go, let's um, get these mad minnows. Let's, let's see what yeah, that can do. For you, it was the Gilligan's Island thing, right? <laughs> minnow, the minnow, yeah. SS minnow, yeah. sure. Uh, and he looks at me, and he said, this is what you're going to use your <laughs> one shot on here? This is it? And I said, yeah, I'm going to use the one shot. And then last year, uh, Blackfoot, um, there that was, and uh, that was already thought out in advance anyway. But um, the first year being at the trade show, and you know, you're seeing these massive booths and all these people going around, and here you guys are. It was just a little table, a little setup. What, what was your thought here? Were you saying this is over our head here? Where are we? What are we doing here? I've always just felt, well, Jess and I would just kind of rise to the occasion. Um, it was when you go by J.C. Newman, you see that big boot yeah. in the factory. You're like, holy cow, this is awesome. Yeah. I was more excited than anything. You yeah, know, It was cool to be a part of the trade show and to meet everyone. And, you know, when you came by and bought those minnows from us, I was just like, you know, coming from Montana, like Jess said, they were, you're going to be a Montana brand. You're not going to ever get out of Montana. People kind of shit on us. Excuse my French. Yeah. And then uh, we just kind of stuck to our story, believed in what we can do and what we yeah. are going to do. And then when you came by, brought us in, it was just like proof of what we're doing is going in the right direction. Who's the concept? We're in New Hampshire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've made we've it. Arrived. Yeah, we've arrived. We've arrived. No, it's, it was certainly intimidating. Uh, and, you know, we had only done one trade show uh, before that with TPE. Okay. And uh, so, you know, we wanted to have an impact, right, for that show. And we, we actually hired a log home builder to build us a full log backdrop, oh mm. not knowing that you had to pay per pound to move $3 the logs in. Yeah. <laughs> so we almost went, uh, we almost went bankrupt just moving <laughs> our set in. Um, but yeah, super intimidating. Um, you know, we care about the brand. We're passionate about what we're doing. And so uh, bottom line is, you know, it's, it's tough to get your foot in the door. There's a lot of people that know what they like and stick with what they like. And uh, there's a lot of people that doubted what we were doing. And um, you know, we just stuck with it and, you know, made the connections, continued to grind. We've got a long way to go, right? Uh, this is only just the beginning and, and having an opportunity like this is significant for us. Yeah. So, so ho hopefully other retailers are going to li listen and, uh, because I know retailers listen to the show too, but you give the guys a, a shot here and try something different. That's, that's not the norm, but the good news is when you take something like your product on there and if I'm the only one around here carrying it, at the, at the moment when I took it in, the only one that had Mad Minnow around here was me. So anyone who was interested in Mad Minnow ends up coming and seeing it for the first time or, you know, well, what's with this? And then I own them for a little while right. and then move on from that point of there. So give the guys a shot, man, for God's sakes. Uh, you're not going to be sorry with the product itself, but yes, is it is it worldwide known brand at this point? No, not yet. But that we we all started that way, you know. So absolutely, yeah. So uh, anything for this trade show coming up? Are you going to like try to bring something to market every single show? So that was our goal with the accelerated show this year. Uh, mm. We weren't able to do that in terms of a new blend. We do have a five count box coming out, and then we're actually going to. Uh, sell the um, Mad Minnow fly box at this show, mm -hmm. which we've not offered that through the show uh, in the past. Our next cigar will be the 
the second to the Cryptid series. So that'll be coming out next year. The only one I have not tried yet, and I said I was going to try it you, before. You're scared of it. I'm, right? I'm afraid it of it. It's scary looking. It's intimidating. <laughs> yeah, that's that right. is. Plus, I've been told by friends that say, wow, this one is it's, by, it, by all it's means strong. the strongest it's one, strong. right? Um, and um, you guys make your cigars not just at the same place because you have the Blackfoot, which is a Dominican cigar. Correct. Everything else is a Nicaraguan cigar. And am I right? There's multiple Nicaraguan factories or just one? Uh, two factories. Okay. Our, two, for, our yeah. first cigar was the Yellowstone, and that was uh, blended at Tapaco Costa. And then uh, after that, we've worked with Carlos Sanchez at Tacasa. Okay. So right now it's three different places that they're making your cigars. And... All good. You have a favorite? I enjoy the cryptid. So. You do. So you like it strong? Oh, it's it's a full flavored cigar, but it's still smooth. You know, it's not harsh. Yeah, that was yeah. one thing I smoked it this morning, and uh, you you know, it's it's a, a standard Nicaraguan profile, but it's not that in your face pepper. It's very subtle, but it, it and it had a very pleasant kick to it. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. How about you? Um, uh, definitely a bitterroot guy. Yeah. I enjoy all of them, uh, but my go-to is the bitterroot. Okay. All right, and what is the lineup? So there's Bitterroot, Blackfoot, Yellowstone. What else do we have? Mad Minnow. And then, so for the River Series, uh, in addition to what you named, we have the Madison and the Bighorn. And so that wraps out our River Series. We're done with the River Series at this mm. point. Uh, there's other of, rivers in the country, you know. You could go outside no, of your state. But none are, none are as good as uh, mm. those for fly fishing. Oh, fair uh. enough. <laughs> so we'll likely release some uh, different sizes uh, of the River Series at some point. We have the Spicket River across the street. It's uh, outstanding for fly fishing. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm told. Told. It's, it's I'm barely told. a river. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can get some trash out of it. Maybe that's about <laughs> it. Shopping cart. Right. <laughs> you got a good pole. You can pull a tire out. Right. Oh, nice, nice. So we have the, uh, the Cryptid, which we just talked about, which We'll be releasing the second cryptid uh, late this year, next year, and then uh, the Mad Minnow, and then uh, the El Professor, which is a short Corona. Yes, a great story on the El Professor. Right. Uh, uh, you want me to run through it? Yes. Okay, so uh, our process is to go down to Esteli, spend a few days, do our business, and then uh, generally head over the mountains towards Leon, and then the small little uh, beach town called Las Panitas on the west coast. Uh, it's, you know, it's super quaint, kind of more of a fishing village, not Americanized at all. It's something that's very attractive for me. And, and then did you go fishing while you were there? Yeah, we do. Wow. Um, cool. So we actually will go out, we'll pay to go out with the local fishermen. Is it, I had heard a story before the volcano came in and it's the only place in the world where you can get a freshwater shock in, the, in Nicaragua, a freshwater shock. Huh. What is a freshwater shock? Because, shark. Oh, shock. shark. Oh, uh, yeah. It's I'm, the accent. I got, <laughs> shock. A shock. A shock. A shock. A shock. A shock. <laughs> that was a shock. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you said shart, so. <laughs> uh, Sorry about surprises. that. Uh, yeah, so I... Yeah, I don't know. I, you got to start learning the language when you come, yeah, come I, to New England. I've been working on it. <laughs> yeah. We've been here 48 hours. Yeah, it's a specific dialect. <laughs> it's an adjustment. Yeah. I thought there, yeah. yeah. All is, right. it, is there such a thing? Did you hear that? that I have not heard that, yeah. but I, I wouldn't be surprised. There's, there's, it says uh, freshwater sharks are native to Southeast Asia, China, Africa, and Central America. Huh. Nicaragua. Hmm. And, and there's some oddball fish that are there that... Um, it doesn't make sense that they're there, but I, apparently the ocean's there, and then the volcano comes in and, and shuts it off, and all that water becomes a lake now at this point. But and they're just adapted. They huh? adapted, yeah. Huh. Something ended up happening. That's cool. So anyway, just some fishing information that I have. <laughs> that, that's as far as it goes, though. So uh, on the professor, um, we had uh, finished up our business for the week and uh, Saturday, and we took off. Over the, over the mountains, about a three hour drive to Leon. Uh, dirt roads, middle of nowhere, no cell service, no GPS. And uh, Adam, our rep, is with it, one of our reps is with us uh, for his first time in Nicaragua. And uh, we get to the kind of towards the top and uh, come into this town called El Sauce, or more like a, a village. And uh, we get through the town, and then there's this gentleman standing on the side of the road wearing slacks and a button up shirt and has a leather briefcase, and he's hitchhiking. In our, in our direction. So 
Uh, we picked them up, and uh, nothing uh, could go wrong. With right. that. Seriously, right. Yeah. giant brass balls right now. Right. <laughs> he was wearing a mask, so I felt like he was he was you know, safe. He was safe. Yeah. 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 So um, outside in Nicaragua, right. in right. direct sunlight. So, so we we pick him up. He opts in the back, and uh, I know enough Spanish to be able to you know converse lightly with him for the drive. And he explains to us that uh, every Saturday he hitchhikes from Leon, you know, two or so hours up to El Sas to tutor the local kids to make sure they stay caught up. Because in most cases, they can't get into Leon to go to school or oh. you know, not a lot of good infrastructure, right? So, um, you know, here's his life story, you know, his children, what he's been doing. He's been doing this for years. He's a teacher in Leon during the week, uh, does this on his own dime, sometimes doesn't get back to town and has to sleep along the way. Uh, just a commitment that I don't think a lot of us are used to, right? Yeah. Um, and. And anyhow, so, of course, I'm impressed with this guy and taken by his story. Uh, we get to the outside of Leon, maybe 20 minutes outside of Leon, and hit a, a roadblock. And uh, Carlos, you know, coached me to always keep, like, $5 equivalent in my front pocket. This is the police roadblock. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Toll, toll road. Toll road. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and uh, so we pull up, um, and this young kid, aviator glasses, with, you know, a rifle comes up, and he's screaming at me and banging on the door banging and so i offer him the money doesn't take it and uh he's saying papeles papeles and i'm looking for you know the insurance or whatever's in this rental car and he's screaming at us and uh our rep is freaking out i mean not experienced anything like yeah. this and i hadn't either um but he can't understand what he's saying and uh anyhow i'm trying to find the papers that's going on for like five or so minutes and at one point the officer leans down to maybe to try to intimidate me or something. And he sees the gentleman in the back seat and he just stops and he said, uh, oh, professor. And then he said, tiene un buen día, and walked away. And uh, so we're just like kind of shocked, like no idea what's going on. And pull away slowly. And uh, it turns out the guy in the back seat was his grade school teacher. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he was embar you know, likely embarrassed as to how he was acting. So we decided to make a, a cigar in his honor. There we go. For uh, numerous reasons. So. There huh. we go. So Life and death. Being Life them. and yes. death. Yeah. Right. There we go. Um, Dave, I looked into this shark thing. Mm. Lake Nicaragua, they're bull sharks. They can be 7 to 11 and a half feet long, 200 to 500 pounds. In a lake. In a lake. And they also have some sawfish. Yeah. Crazy, right? It's crazy. I had something there. Yeah. You know what else I have? I have the question of the week right now, and the question of the week is brought to you by Dunbot and Tobacco and Trust. It's time for the question of the week, brought to you by Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust, makers of Sobra Mesa, Nike Rita, Sin Compromiso, Wastra de Saca, and a whole bunch of other cigars that don't suck. <laughs> And the following message was submitted through the Contact Us page of thecigarauthority.com. This guy has a great email. Mm. Two gas passer. It's awesome. Uh, great show. I really appreciate all of the information you give us listeners. I was hoping to get some more information about large humidors. I started the hobby several years ago and bought a 75-count humidor. It works great with gel beads and a digital hygrometer for monitoring, but I find myself collecting more and would really like to buy boxes when I find a cigar I truly love. I've heard there are both negatives uh, to electric humidors as well as positives. I had hoped that you could give me and the listeners some more information about advantages and disadvantages in regarding to storing and maintaining my cigars in such a cabinet. What type of long-term experience do you have with the success or failure of electronic cabinets? Are there any you would recommend? I have no failures. At all, I can't think of what a failure would be. Well, we did struggle initially by following the directions um, mm. with the oh, humidor. Oh, you looked at the directions. Yeah, yeah. that was a mistake. Yeah. I mean, um, you, you may have electrical failures over time. I Unless they're know. talking about those wine refrigerators. That's, that's what they mean by Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So the, yeah. the issue is when you chill air, your relative humidity goes up. So if oh. you set the unit up and you follow the directions or you try to acclimate the unit in any way without turning it on, you end up saturating the wood with too much moisture 
and when you lower the temperature, your moisture content skyrockets. So my advice would be to plug it in, put your stuff in, have your digital hygrometer, and you just monitor it every couple of hours for the first day, and then every day for the first week, and you just play with how much humidification you're putting in or that you're taking out, and you'll be able to dial it in. It really is the most beneficial for people who live in extremely hot climates and extremely dry climates. If you're in New England, you may struggle with the electronics, although I, I have friends that have them, and they started to fig they figured out how to yeah, do it. Yeah, use it. sales yeah. so well, you can't you, get the you got to dial it right. in over time. Yeah. And, you know, some folks in the chat room are saying, yeah, he's got a 2,000 count. It was expensive, but relatively... They're not expensive compared to getting a large wooden unit that's yeah, yeah. going to hold that kind of volume. But even the, the large, the bigger wooden units, if you get one that has the, the newer upgraded thicker wood stock doors, uh, even if they have a glass panel, they've done a really good job of being able to get that glass to be seated inside that wood and pinned in. And they set them up with magnets and the wood itself has been cured properly so they don't warp anymore. There was an issue with those thinner doors. So the the bigger wood units work awesome with a, a machine like a Cigar Oasis or a Hydra. Either of those have a big reservoir and they work on a baffle. So when it's calling for humidity, the baffle opens and you deliver humidity. And when the it doesn't need humidity, the baffle shuts and it seals itself. That really is, for my money, the most ideal way to do it. But if you're hell-bent on getting an electronic one, you're just going to have to pay, do the time, put the yes. time in. There we go. And what do the people from Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust think of that? Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust expressly disclaims any liability for the answers provided with no guarantees of accuracy or usefulness except that our cigars don't suck. There we go. <laughs> so that is that. Um, so you guys get into the cigar industry five years ago, you're saying now? About five, yeah. Five years ago. And it isn't enough to have your own cigar brands. You start your own cigar store. Right, so uh, Stogie's in Billings, Montana. It's the oldest running t true tobacconist shop in Montana. Uh, it had been in business uh, 60, 63? 63 years when wow. we uh, had an opportunity to purchase it. So that was our first brick and mortar that we got into, that they gave us a chance. So that's Oh, they were your first customer too. Right, so okay. that was with our Yellowstone cigar. That was our first cigar. Uh, you know, not only did they bring us in, but they also mentored us in terms of nice. walking us through the existing branding. And we made some adjustments based on their feedback. Uh, about six months later, uh, they approached us and uh, were ready to, to let it go. They had had it for the last 24 years, um, <laughs> Scott and Pam. Uh, Pam ran the store every day. And uh, their stance was that they wanted somebody that cared enough about cigars and tobacco in the community as we did. Yeah. And uh, so they gave us the opportunity. And now my mom runs the store for us. Yay. And uh, it's, uh, it's an excellent setup for us to, to be able to leverage that presence and just be part of the broader cigar community in Montana. Beautiful. Is your mom watching now? I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> hey, Audrey. Do uh, you, I know, um, is it you just, you have a son and you have one on the way? Correct. Correct. You guys have any plans to uh, have a next generation kind of slide in? Is that the, the mission? That'd be the dream. Yeah, that'd be awesome. It's a little early to be planning that, isn't it? Yeah. Like, as is Yogi it? Berra says, it gets late early. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would say for us, uh, you know, we, we started this company, uh, you know, and for the first four years or so worked full-time jobs. I still work a full-time job. Brandon just went full-time about a year ago. And so how do you measure success, right? Uh, do you, you know, measure success by sitting next to someone and getting the interaction when they enjoy your product? I would say yes, getting feedback. Uh, you know, do you, put it, do you put numbers on it? Do you put growth rate on it? I don't know, but success for me would be for us to be able to hand this to our sons, have them run it, and have it be one of the brands that's in your store you know, 100 years from now. Right. That's success for there me. There we go. All right, Mr. Jonathan, what do you think so far? Big sky, bit of root? Not your first time smoking this? No, it's not. Yeah. Uh, if you were to, uh, you, you got to have a nonstick pan to do this, but you, you put some brown sugar in the pan, hmm. and you, you slowly warm that until it liquefies. You dust that with a little bit of white pepper, and you take the back of a silver spoon, and you just drag it across that and lick the spoon. You're tasting some smoke, you fucking asshole. <laughs> What's up, buddy? Come on. 
I would go to Ed Sullivan, but uh, Ed Sullivan seems to be smoking something totally different. Oh, wow. I, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Thanks for the support, Ed. It's very good, though. <laughs> <laughs> what are you smoking over there? Oh, yeah, this one. The Blackfoot. I was supposed to have the one in the back. Yeah, the one we're all smoking. And well, that we mentioned a whole bunch of times. <laughs> Listen, um, and you're saying with these flavor notes, you're saying he's out of his mind. That's not yeah, what I it, taste. Yeah, it wasn't making any sense <laughs> with these lemons in the sun and all of it. But uh, no, I'm smoking the black one, which is also an excellent cigar. It's an excellent cigar. So you can. That's try a to, first. Yeah, that he I'm did just, it by accident. I, yeah. I said uh, I was ready to go to him, and I go, Mr. Like, Jonathan, what do you think of that cigar? Because. What the hell is he smoking hey, over there? Listen, at least I'm I'm smoking something from Big Sky. At least. It would have been bad if I, I did. I was pick. hoping you were. Yeah, yeah. Of All course. Right. Let's go to break. And when we come back, uh, we have uh, Jess and Brandon here. Um, it seems they drink beer. So we're going to uh, open a few microbrew beers and see if we can get the hidden flavors. We're going to see how good their flavor notes are and if they can guess what the flavors are on there and just check their palates out. We're just getting to know them and so are you. Uh, we'll be back in just a few minutes. You're listening to The Cigar Authority. We're live from the Toscano Soundstage on the United Podcast Network. Romeo y Julieta Reserva Real Nicaragua. The Nicaraguan expression of America's beloved brand, Reserva Real. Reserva Real Nicaragua is a Nicaraguan puro, meticulously blended by Rafael Nodal and made by A.J. Fernandez. The Reserva Real Nicaragua will take Romeo lovers and Romeo novices alike on a journey through premium Nicaraguan tobaccos. Reserva Real Nicaragua. It'll steal your heart again. Surgeon General warning, cigar smoking can cause lung cancer and heart disease. Cigar in the shop called Elberton, Elberton, Elberton. There's a cigar in the shop called Elberton. Cut and light one now. Elberton cigars are handmade premium cigars from Nicaragua, created by the J.C. Newman Cigar Company. Expect a smooth, hearty smoke with a little spice and a great value. There's a cigar in the shop called Elberton, Elberton, Elberton. There's a cigar in the shop called Elberton, cut and light one now. In a world where the open road calls to the adventures, there is a cigar that pays tribute to a journey of resilience and determination. Introducing the Christoph Guardrail Cigar, a testament to the indomitable spirit of its founder, Glenn Case. The Guardrail's blend takes you on a captivating journey through the world's finest tobacco regions. Brazilian Maduro, Dominican Binder, and a unique touch of Zimbabwe. This medium to full-bodied cigar offers a variety of flavors that will delight your senses. With notes of caramel, the smoothness of French roast coffee, and the allure of dry cocoa, the God Rail's complexity is unmatched. Whether you're celebrating life's victories or savoring moments of camaraderie, the Christoph Guardrail Cigar brings people together with its unforgettable flavor and creamy finish. Take your taste buds on a ride they won't forget. Experience the Christoph Guardrail Cigar today. Christoph Cigars, take them for a ride. Since 1964, Padron Cigars have had the same mission. With over 50 years spent to create a perfect cigar, and more than 100 years to create a perfect legacy, the Padron family understands the significance of time. 
Padrón delivers only the finest handmade complex cigars with the flavor of the Cuban heritage, out of which the Padrón recipe was born. The Padrón mission is simple, exceptional quality of their cigars and not the quantity produced. As a vertically integrated family-owned company, personal attention to every detail is taken in all steps of the tobacco growing and cigar making process. Padron Cigars, they give you the cigar smoker, the confidence that each cigar is the same. Perfect. Padron Cigars, handcrafted since 1964. Hey, what's up? This is Bill Burr, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. And we are back, powered by the West Tampa Tobacco Company, featuring West Tampa Black, White, and Red West Tampa Cigars. It's passion with a purpose. We are here with the Big Sky Bitterroot Cigar that we're smoking with the folks from Big Sky, Jess Coleman, Brandon Marsh, and we're about to see how they're... Um, flavor notes, if they really pick up flavor notes that uh, you hear Jonathan saying. Which, these. by the way, they have never said that at all while they've been here. What? Uh, downstairs, I was hanging out with them for two and a half they hours. They said, we know flavor they notes. They never said anything about flavor notes. You, you made this up. I don't know why we're doing this. We're, we're doing it because... Uh, <laughs> Because we can. So I have, four, I have four different micro brew beers, and they're all from New Hampshire. Huh. So Does that know. make them good or bad? Well, it, it's different. At least they, mm-hmm. they're here. And what do you do when they're here? You have Something a little local. taste of our locals, sure. right? Why wouldn't you get some Montana beer so that there'd be another thing in New Hampshire, another company that could have arrived? Well, we're going to just go with this. So New Hampshire <laughs> Brewery called Northwoods uh, made this beer. They claim to add a little merry to your day. Oh, wow. Mary. Yep. It is a so robust stout, well balanced, and scrumptious is what it says. Scrumptious. It is. Scrumptious. So that looks like a piece of paper that you typed I, up. I did. Okay. <laughs> so they may or may not have said that. They did. I took it from yeah. the inside, but I can't show you what it it's looks, called. Looks like stout. I can't show you that. Yep. Looks pretty heavy. It's stout. Well, if it's stout, it's going to be oatmeal or chocolate. That's what they like to do. Well, Okay. I guess coffee. Not the one that's too. overflowing right above me. Oh, thank you. Sir. All right. So we'll give this a little taste, and then uh, reveal what what uh, what are the flavors, what food pairs with it, and which blue uh, big sky cigar would pair best with this. Is the huh. three questions. We're going to ask on these. All right. I'm picking up some notes on the, the smell here. So don't you give it out, Jonathan. Write it down. I'm writing it down. So you see me writing. Let them figure out what it is. And you guys, uh, studio audience, you're well. Well, I can't give that to you yet until I reveal mm. it. Oh, that's tart. Just a silver on the top. That's all you what? can see. It's tart. Oh, that! Are you sure that's a stout and not an IPA? That's a little hoppy. That is hoppy as shit. Yeah, it's a robust stout, well balanced and scrumptious. No, no, it's, it's not, not scrumptious. Balanced. It claims to add a little merry to your day. <clears throat> All right, I have I have four flavors. All right, what do you got? What do you got? Anything? Uh, I'm, no, he doesn't I'm care. Up, uh, like, if you melted black licorice with some grapefruit in a unripened cherry. Did we just become <laughs> best friends? <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. All right, what do you think? It's, uh, it's not my cup of tea, but <laughs> definitely uh, it's bitter. It's you, bitter. Does it go with bitter root? I wouldn't pair it with a bitter root, no. Well, here's, here's where, not that I'm going to completely disagree with you, but here's where I could make an argument for pairing. It is the absolute antithesis of bitter root, so you wouldn't have flavors canceling themselves out Right. I'm noticing that I still get the caramel and the white pepper hmm. flavors from the cigar. And that, that's sort of a, a complementary type pairing as opposed to, you know, working in complete opposition. All right. This is called Crawlerful Life. And do you know what a crawler is? No. Like a, we would call it maybe a cruller, like a donut. It's like a donut, but it's long. It's called a crawler. So a it, beer. it's a New England thing. Donut beer? It is a, a 
Chai Cruller Pastry Stout. Oh. Oh. So I got citrus, vanilla, blueberry, and chocolate. Like a Cruller? Like uh, a Cruller donut? No? Huh. All right. So I'll Ooh. put this up here. Anybody that wants to grab some that's up there, we're going to move on to number two. Hmm. Yeah, that was terrible. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> so number two, I'll tell you, is... A brewery in New Hampshire called Branch Blade. Uh, back to the building blocks of life. Cuisine, cuisine, we go. This beer is known as a sour ale. Sour ale, but we're looking, sour. For, fla- we're looking for flavor notes on it. Oh, it's red. Oh, maybe it's got sour cherry. I'm scared. Mm. Uh, this is delicious. You like it? Delicious. Is it merry or not so it, much? It, it should be merry like the other one said yeah. it's merry, but this one is... Tastes like one of those, or smells like one of those golden uh, cherry cough drops. Mmm. Let me see that again. I'm going to pour myself a second one. Wow. All right. That's rare. It's rare. <laughs> it's like sparkling Kool-Aid is what that is. <laughs> is it delicious? I guess. You think the big Kool-Aid will burst through the wall there? That's what I feel like is going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You got this. Cherry Kool-Aid without enough water. Oh. Mixed yeah, with super like, concentrated. Yeah, mixed with... Uh, like a touch of Robitussin and a Swedish fish. <laughs> I think he nailed it, he folks. He nailed that. <laughs> he nailed that. He can hang. He can hang. That's Jeff. Brandon, you got anything different on that? I definitely taste the Robitussin. All right. Huh. So we got... <laughs> God. This is going well. That was this great. This is called Double Grape Jelly. Oh. Grape jelly. Yeah, it was grape more cherry jelly. forward than uh, grape. Sour ale with natural flavorings. Double grape jelly. Maybe they should have thrown some peanut I, butter I in there. I think it's delicious, actually. I didn't. I, I actually, I could drink it. Maybe one. I feel like two would put me in a hangover. Mm. But I, I didn't get grape at all. Yeah, two would put you in a uh, insulin coma. Right. <laughs> it's really And sweet. supposedly, they use real flavor. You know, it's not artificial. Actual grapes. Mm. Wow! Yeah, they put a jar of grape jelly. I in always the mash. Liked, <laughs> like that type of flavor medicine. <laughs> How did you feel about the children's aspirin? Oh, eat those. It. Yeah, eats those yeah, daily. because that's Candy. almost like um, orange and um, yeah. cream, right? A creamsicle. A creamsicle. Yeah. All right. So this one is a brewery called Henniker. It claims it's an award-winning double brown ale. <laughs> claims. And their unpumpkin beer. Oh. It's called the, it is their unpumpkin beer. So they took so all the pumpkin a, spice out. It could be a squash-based beer. <laughs> squash. It, it says pumpkins <laughs> off of porches. Ah. Spaghetti squash. Acorn squash. So here we go here. <clears throat> all right. Let's hope the cherry flavor doesn't taint it. Taint. <laughs> Does it taste like squash? <laughs> Hard pass. Huh. We're not asking if you like it. We're saying what's the flavor notes on this? Um, gross. Tastes like beer. It tastes like... Yuck. It tastes like somebody hopped a hop. So it, it, to me, it tastes like a can of like Keystone Light that you left in the back seat of your truck for a couple weeks in hundred degree weather. Yeah. See, he's he's but got to chill. But, on but then, you it, it, then, then you re it. 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 Right. It's a little skunk. And it's flat. It feels flat. Yeah, to me. skunked flat. That sounds good. It tastes this like a college. Big, big advertisement for the. These are micro brews beers that will never be advertised. Uh, yeah, I don't the think they will be. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, an old shoe. An old shoe. Uh. <laughs> well, this old, is old called. Shoe. This is called flapjacks. It should be called brown flat sugar jacks and double brown ale. 
Huh. So it's supposed to taste like flapjacks, which are pancakes, right? Yeah. With brown, and it has the maple syrup from the uh, New England maple syrup. Yeah. Sure does. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. taste like any um, of that. Yeah, I, I think at some point we decided we're not even going to suggest a pairing with Yeah, a I think big, we got to let yeah, that go. Yeah, we got to yeah, let it go. A, yeah. if, you, if you hate it, you hate it. Okay, and the last one is called Throwback. It claims it is <laughs> crisp and refreshing Pilsner, and it's a fan favorite. So oh, this is oh. their fan favorite. I saved the best for last, well, I think. A Pilsner might have less yuck in it. Yeah? Yeah. All right, so let's see what happens there. You've got a nice head on your pour. So we know it's not flat. No, this is a nice, clean-looking beer like you would expect. Like a Pilsner. Smells like Coors Light. Hmm. Looks like Coors Light. It's Coors Light in a ball kick. Coors Light. Oh, with a little kick. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Here we go. The White Mountains are turning orange. Yeah. <laughs> if wait till after you finish drinking it. Oh, wait. that's that took a turn. <laughs> yep. <laughs> something something There's happened here. Somebody somebody dumped a thing of Tabasco inside the uh, the mash. It, what? It's spicy. It it's an odd sensation because it just kind of comes in on your palate. Did it happen there? <sighs> yeah, I'm getting the spice. Yeah. Up. Yeah. A little heat. Like three hours ago, I finished a fireball kind of spice. <laughs> <laughs> Still oh, I, lingering. I'm getting that jalapeno or something in there. Yeah. Something. There's some burning. It's burning. Mm. Yeah, it just tastes like burning. <laughs> tastes, tastes like <laughs> burning. Tastes like fire. Tastes like fire. <laughs> this is, and you nailed it right there. Brandon has it. It is jalapeno. It is a spice bohemian. Bohemian Pilsner with jalapeno. <sighs> I tasted the bohemian in there. Yeah, and do you have a favorite here? I would go with the chair or the grape jelly. Grape, grape jelly, jelly. Yeah. I would too. Grape jelly was good. Yeah, the grape jelly. Yeah, yeah. I think that's got to be the one. Yeah, so I don't folks, see how someone could finish an entire can of that. I don't either. The next day would be painful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Those are mm. microbrew beers. That's where the, there's a beer store uh, right across the street from us called the Beer Store right here in Salem, New Hampshire. They have, it's very interesting. How did they to go come up there. with that name? The Beer Store, right? Yeah. How perfect. Yeah. And they have over a thousand different beers. Ooh. Oh, wow. And, and some you, buy, of them. you managed can. to pick the four worst. Right? <laughs> we let them pick it. We let them pick it. You know what? They gave you the stuff they can't sell. I don't know. <laughs> the other one said fan favorite. Which one was that? Is that the flapjack one? <laughs> fan it was favorite. the jalapeno was the fan favorite. Uh-huh. But you guys can take this if you want. If, if, <laughs> yeah, if, you, feels, if you're sold on this, you highly recommend. Try it. Uh, but anyway, it's interesting to me <clears throat> of the taste. And that last one, I, I put last because I figured exactly what's going to yeah. be happening. The with that yeah, yeah. it's going to be miserable for the next 10 minutes. So while that's happening right now, it's time for the confessional, and that's brought to you by All Saints Cigars. It's time for the confessional. Brought to you by All Saints Cigars, featuring the All Saints St. Francis, voted the 2021 Cigar of the Year, All Saints Cigars. In the name of the Churchill, Toro, and Robusto. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. And how long has it been, my son, since your last St. Francis uh, uh, <clears throat> confession? It's been one week since my last confession. And what is it that you have to confess today, my son? And the following message was submitted through the Contact Us page of the thecigarauthority.com. This guy has a great email as well, and I know it's not real. Ashhole at freecigars.net. Hmm. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned with a smile on my face. It's confidential. You're not supposed to say anything. What if that is really his na- his information? It's confidential. It's mm. not. Okay. Might be. You just ruined somebody's life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> confidential. You say his email address. It's not his real email address. A few years ago, I attended a big cigar event in West Palm Beach. Following that event, the hosting cigar lounge had an after party. It was packed and full of cigar lovers, minus a few ash holes. I was sitting at the outside patio, 
talking with people when two guys came up and joined us. As per the lounge life, they joined in on the conversation, and we welcomed that. However, these two douche canoes wanted to trash some of the cigars we had been smoking douche canoes. talking about overly perverted and disrespectful things with some of the waitresses and women attending the event. Hmm. Needless to say, we began to ignore them because that type of shit doesn't fly with me. The two got up and left. And soon the seats were taken by two other gentlemen. One of the gentlemen tapped me on the shoulder and handed me a black bag telling me he didn't want to sit on my cigars. I opened the bag and found two boxes of Davidoff The Late Hour. Oh, mm. my. Leftover from the person before. And a brand new Calibri lighter and cutter. From the so I held on to the bag no. thinking the two ash holes would come back, mm. and they never did. During that time, uh, I find out that the waitress serving them was never paid for the drinks. Wow. They stiffed her with the bill, Whew. which was two beers and two shots. I picked up the tab since I, too, was a bartender back in my younger years, and I know it sucks. Small price to pay when you take home nearly $1,000 in cigars and accessories for free. Have at me, Father. What am I smoking for my sins? Ed Sullivan, what do you think of that? Ah, oh, jeez, I don't know if that's all that bad. Try to smoke at least one All Saints St. Saint Francis cigars this week. Perfectly legitimate. He really didn't even need any penance. Yeah, would you, would you <laughs> open the box and pass them out to everybody that's there? Share it. Mm. It's not yours. Well, it give would it to be the that. waitress. Here's your tip. And what, what's she gonna do with it? Yeah, no, I, I think it was fine. Yeah, you can't be passing them out. You got to wait the whole time you're there. Okay. In case they come back, but all right, it's fine. All right, upcoming shows uh, next week on the show. We are. Uh, it is the survey says we're going to give the results of the survey the following week. We bring on Mr. Steve Sack will join us. And we're going to talk about really? cigars that existed in the uh, 80s and 90s. Mm. Will you be here for that? I think so. Okay. I hope so. Good, because you're going to. Do you know something I don't know? No, I don't oh. know. You've got a lot of things planned. I got things going on. Yeah. I, I got a life. Yeah. All right. Got to get me one of those. <laughs> uh, but we're, we're here with Jess and Brandon. It's Big Sky Cigars. Uh, do you want to tell us anything of that's coming up or any information that yeah, nobody secret knows? Stuff. Secret stuff. We love stuff. secret stuff. I mean, really just, uh, you know, the, the cryptid release next year. Uh, keep an eye out for that. We're pretty excited about that. Um, that's really all the information we have on it at this point. But. And you guys are doing the blending and stuff. You're working with, with the people from the factory. Right. And not, not making believe like... You're down in the factory all the thing. No, that's correct. Every yeah. every cigar we've made, uh, we've been at the factory for the entire process. Okay. And how's that collaboration work with both of you? Is, is one of you say, no, we should make this milder, and no, we should make it stronger? Or how to So, to be honest, I mean, uh, we know that, you know, we're still learning, and we're always going to be learning. And uh, we don't go in there with a closed mind. Uh, there's a lot of people around us in those facilities that know... A hell of a lot more than we do and so we listen uh, of course we provide feedback um, and kind of find a balance between uh, what we like what we think will work and and then listen to the feedback of the mm. the folks that have been doing it for generations well you got closest to the grape jelly and you got close you nailed the jalapeno <laughs> and here, here it is jonathan who thinks he knows everything i think you, you guys beat him on that, well, so I think he got good palates. The, the chat room says that Jonathan seems a bit on the Maduro side today, and perhaps he should change his tampon. Yeah? <laughs> oh, my God. Well, I think he's been out flavor noted uh, <laughs> that um, I, I think Jess has, is really good. Um, you know, we're worried about Jonathan if... Um, <laughs> yes, we are. Uh, if he sticks around for much longer, we need somebody to jump in that spot. I wish you would live closer. Hey, I'll come in every Saturday. That's yeah. fine. All right. Yeah. Just, just it's not case. far. Because he, he, you know, with the... The lectin thing. Yeah. yeah. There's, a, there's a lot going on. He may join this. a cult, too, and just leave. I'm probably on a spaceship or something. Yeah, you wouldn't know you were in it. Right. Yeah. So where, where, where were we on price on Bitterroot? Do you have that? Do you guys know it? What's bitter root? Should have retailed around twelve bucks. Yeah, twelve dollars. Twelve dollar cigar, uh, good value cigar for a for cigar sure. this good. Um, uh, you have any plans of 
going into the ultra premium where people are going, or that's not a Montana thing of <laughs> crazy hundred dollar cigars or anything crazy on that level. Oh, uh, we joked around about making a run of one million dollar cigar. So there's only one. Yeah, <laughs> and if somebody gives it to you, guys are all set. You got working capital. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I would say to be in the position to do that, um, you've got to have time in the industry. You've got to earn the respect of the consumer. And so to me, that's, you know, a 10, 15 year outlook thing where we could be in a position to have the trust of the consumer to step into something like that. But yeah. it would be something we would be interested in. All right. And Brandon, you've got a baby on the way. I do. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Hopefully everything turns out wonderful and you have uh-huh. the next generation ready to, and it's a boy for sure. It is. So you've got two boys uh-huh. on the way. Next generation is all set. Don't, do don't we have to thank these gentlemen for their generous gift yes we have meat that we will be uh testing and trying on tuesday it looks spectacular each steak is three pounds well really? you're, you yeah. took the big one yours is close i took to the three. one he handed me uh, you <laughs> took the big one i saw you you got to bulk up it's winter a <laughs> lot, lot of mobbling well he needs it right. that was from a farm in in uh in you Montana, your, yeah, Harden, Bar S Ranch. All right, yeah, farm to table. They grew the beef, cut it up. So, wow, uh, we'll grass fed, no hormones, can't get any more natural all, than that. Also, you gave me, and it's in my pocket here, uh, is a, an odd gift for a man to give another man, but uh, <laughs> I will take it anyway, which is a fly fish hook. fly hook. What is something? Uh, what do you call it? It's a, a streamer. It's a streamer for fly fishing. But it is in the color coding and everything of the bitter root cigar that was spoken here. Wow. I don't know what I'm going to have to do with it, but I'll, I'll have it forever. Well, uh, next time you're in Nicaragua, try to catch a shark with it. Yeah. yeah. I don't try think to get a water, sh- water you shark. You ever go fly fishing? No, I don't think you're I supposed to once. use that. That's a collector's item. It's in a special box and everything. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, really? Si- the box is signed by the guy who made it. It is. It took it him is. 10 hours. 10 <laughs> hours to make this. Yeah. His name is Ryan Morgan. All right. Ryan Morgan, thanks. This is, uh, I don't know what I'll do with this. <laughs> <laughs> when you get something odd like this, it's like, what do well, we do with it? You're though? saying it's odd in their culture. It is. This it's is, completely I a normal it. gift. Believe me, I appreciate it. It's, it's, like, it's something that a man would give another man is in it? Montana. Sure. Do, do, right. do you guys give fl- uh, hooks to each Strictly. other? Strictly. That's it. That's <laughs> it. Christmas has become boring. <laughs> do, you, do you know how to make them? I've never tied a fly. No? I tied flies growing up. I, yeah? Uh, yeah, I actually learned how to tie flies at a Hardee's. Like a, you guys have Hardee's out here? It's like a Carl's, place, Jr. Yeah. Carl's Jr. So yeah. my mom signed me up for a Trout Unlimited fly tying class. It was held at Hardee's. Um, and uh, so, I, yeah, I've been fl- do, tying flies. Do since. they do a lot of random training events at, at Hardee's? Hardee's? Yeah, mainly like uh, Weight Watchers. Could this, <laughs> yeah. could this be some sort of crazy cigar event that we could ever do with a fly fishing? You're going to tie your own fly? Tie your own fly and cigar. Is there uh, something here? We've got to think of it. It's an art. Just yeah. like making cigars. And, and people in your area, oh, did you see his fly? This, like, you know this is well yeah, you done. say, did you see his fly right. in Boston? It means something yeah. completely yeah. different. Jonathan was checking out my fly all morning. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uncomfortable. Hey, guys, thank you so much yeah. for coming up here all, all the way up here. Good luck in the future. Retailers out there, uh, give their, sh- their cigars a try, uh, uh, Big Sky Cigars. And the consumers out there, go to your favorite brick-and-mortar retailer and ask for them. That's how it ends up happening in most cigar retail shops. They need to be asked for it. You want Big Sky Cigars and give these guys uh, a shot. So uh, thanks again for uh, joining in. We're going to go to break. When we come back, uh, we have a press conference coming up this week. We're going to tell you how you can join that and what that's all about. And a new version of an old brand we're going to light up. This cigar was the biggest selling cigar by far in the 80s. Uh, We're live at the Toscano Soundstage, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. 
Are you a member of the Cigar Authority Care Package? Well, if not, my friend, the time is now. For just $29.99, you get four premium cigars delivered to your door each month. And we'll smoke those cigars along with you during the show. Is that really a benefit? I think it is. We will judge the construction, flavor, strength, and review the cigars, and you'll see how right or wrong we really are. You might be surprised. Four premium cigars delivered to you for just $29.99, and you can quit any time, but you won't. The value is incredible. Want to take the Cigar Authority Care Package to the next level? Sign up or upgrade to the Cigar Authority Care Package Prime. For just $5 more, you get an extra cigar and usually something special. That's five cigars each month, all different. Find the Cigar Authority Care Package on the CigarAuthority.com and sign up now. That's the Cigar Authority Care Package. Aging Room 4 Nicaragua Maestro. Named Cigar Aficionado's number one cigar of the year with a 96 rating is a complex Nicaraguan puro carefully blended by Rafael Nodal and made by A.J. Fernandez. As Cigar Aficionado described it, every puff is an overture of flavors that's at times heavy and rich with notes of dark chocolate and wood, and other times subtle and understated with hints of fine caramel and toasted almonds. Treat yourself to an aging Room 4 Nicaragua today. Surgeon General warning, tobacco smoke increases the risk of lung cancer and heart disease even in non-smokers. You've heard us talking before about the best cigar magazine in the world, Cigar Journal. You want to know what makes Cigar Journal the best cigar magazine? Cigar Journal covers every angle of the cigar world. From exclusive stories and features, insightful interviews with industry power players, detailed cigar reviews, and of course, all the latest news and reports surrounding premium cigars. We're telling you, you will be impressed. Cigar Journal has stunning images, explanations of cigar science basics. This is the magazine for any cigar enthusiast. Or better yet, passionado. Cigar Journal covers cigars in the U.S. and around the world and is printed right here in the USA. You owe it to yourself to discover the world's best cigar magazine, Cigar Journal. Available at your local cigar retailer and on the web at their new website, CigarJournal.com. That's CigarJournal.com. Hi, this is Rocky Patel, and believe it or not, I am 62 years old. Well, to celebrate my 60th birthday, we wanted to come up with something really, really special. I went and looked at some of our oldest tobaccos that we'd grown in our farms from 2014 in Esteli, Nicaragua, and we found bales of fillers, 7th and 8th priming Lijero, just wonderful, rich, rich tobaccos a dark oily San Andreas wrapper, a great binder from Mexico, and then fillers from Jalapa and Esteli. This cigar is called the Rocky Patel 60th, looks like a dark chocolate and tastes like a dark chocolate. It's got layers and layers of coffee, espresso, lingering spice. Uh, It is rich and decadent. You're gonna try one and you're gonna fall in love. This cigar, got the number two cigar of the year in Cigar Aficionado, rightly so. I hope you enjoy it. I love it. And I promise you, this cigar is going to deliver everything you enjoy in a fine cigar. Some say cigars are all the same. It's just not true. It's you I have to blame. Well, I don't know, because what I know, there is a cigar called Aladino. Corojo. Aladino Corojo. Aladino Corojo. They say authentic, so we're not confused, while the others say it's a word that's just abused. I guess that's so, they can't compete, at least I'm sure Aladino can't be beat. Corojo. Aladino Corojo. Aladino Corojo. 
Aladino Cigars. Use authentic Corojo tobacco from JRE Tobacco. This is the greatest commercial you ever heard. Yeah. This is Rafael Nodal from Agent Room Cigars and Tabacalera USA. You're listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. And we are back, powered by the West Tampa Tobacco Company, featuring West Tampa Black, White, and Red. It's West Tampa Cigars, passion with a purpose. And uh, I've been excited about this cigar for over a year now. The talk has been, the chatter has been out there, um, that it is the triumphant return of... Well, Dave, today's second cigar is Te Amo Toro. Ooh. It is manufactured in Mexico by the Torrent family for Altadas USA. The size we're smoking is a 6x52 Toro. It is wrapped in a San Andreas Habano. The binder is San Andreas Negro, and the fillers are San Andreas Habano. A single is going to set you back $11.39, while a box of 20 is $199.99, dropping the single price down to just $10 on TwoGuysCigars.com. If you're too far away from a brick-and-mortar retailer that carries it, try TwoGuysCigars.com. That's the number two guys cigars. Com. Boy, was this a monster cigar brand in its day, Jonathan. You weren't around for it, but you could go to stores in Philadelphia or New York, and the sign at their store with that store name on it said Tiamo on one big of the bull. sides. With the big bull on it. And they the, didn't use the big bull for the packaging. They did not. Huh? They did not, but they did call the size the Toro. All right. They ended up doing yeah. that anyway. Uh, all right, let's give it a cut and light. It's time to cut our cigar. The official cutting brought to you by our friends at Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo is the brand, while all other brands were raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal S-chip tax and actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. excellence. So, uh, the reintroduction of the iconic Tiamo cigars, the original San Andreas cigar, this is when we just called it Mexican tobacco mm-hmm. in the day, uh, has a rich history dating, dating back to 1963. Tiamo quickly became Mexican's leading cigar brand and renowned worldwide. The story of Tiamo begins in 1880 when the Torrent family, a Spanish native, settles in the San Andreas Valley of Mexico. Recognized in the exceptional soil and the climate, the Torrents dedicate themselves to the art of cultivating and harvesting tobacco since 1880. Over the course of five generations now, the Torrent family have improved their expertise in tobacco cultivation and cigar making, resulting in a deep respect and admiration for the Mexican land. San Andreas, nestled in the southeast of the Veracruz state near the Gulf of Mexico. Longstanding uh, tradition of cultivating, curing, meticulously hand-rolling cigars. Uh, Throughout the 20th century, the tobacco industry in the San Andreas has flourished, both in size and quantity, gaining global recognition. While various tobacco seeds have been cultivated in this region, the native Negro San Andreas tobacco plant remains the most prevalent. The relaunch of Tiamo is initially in three sizes. The Robusto is 5x54, the Magnum is 6x60, and of course, the Toro, the most famous of all, 6x52. Uh, this cigar is the one that created the Toro size. When you hear anybody say Toro, this is where it came bull. from. Right, it came... I'm not saying what you're saying yes, is bull, but... Every, everybody that called whatever size this was at the time had a different name for it. And Tiamo was accompanied instead of end up ending up calling it a double Corona or whatever said, no, it's the Toro for their brand. And then it was copied and copied and copied. And, and that became a thing, actually, well, put, giving the nod to Tiamo each time. Part of it, I think, is that people would say, give me a box of Tiamo Toros. And they, they, they sold in such massive quantities. I bet the consumer drove the name of that just starting to call six inch well, you could, by 50 cigars you could Toros. Just, you could just come in and say, give me a box of Toros because it was the only one that was a Toro mm-hmm. at the time. And everybody did. As strong as the brand um, Padron is today, that 
A Padrone smoker smokes Padron, and that's all they smoke. This is how Tiamo was to an unbelievable degree that they didn't want to change the size, they didn't want to change the brand. This was it, Tiamo. And it would be somebody that would come in, wants a high end cigar, they say, Give me a Tiamo. They want a value cigar, give me a Tiamo. I want a really good cigar today, give me a Tiamo. It Which would- is a, it's an odd name because Tiamo would be what Romeo would have said to Juliet. Yeah, I love you. Correct. So, I love you is the name of the cigar, and that the insignia was a bull. Yeah, yeah. A little goofy. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Very, so, very clean, cold draw. You know, yeah. being Tiamo, I expected dirt. Earthy. Right. Yeah. It used to earthy, be a very, right. very earthy. <laughs> but as I said in the, uh, that they have been cultivating this tobacco and they've been working it. There's so many people using Mexican San Andreas tobacco today, but not as a Puro. The only Puro that I can think of is Tiamo, and it was gone for a few years. Yeah. And uh, we were the last standout. We were still carrying mm-hmm. it uh, up until we couldn't get it anymore. And yeah, here you it still is. had people buying boxes of yes. them. Yes. The old timers. The old timers. Now they're going to see if we can bring it back. They certainly changed the look of it, and I'll tell you, they changed the taste of it. We're going to light our cigar today with the Single Action Excalibur by Lotus. Sorry, Ed Sullivan. That's all right. I got you. We got a two-jet lighter. Those jets are angled for pinpoint accuracy, and they are fueled by the patented Vertigo big-ass tank. Right in the front of the lighter, you've got a deep V cutter on the side, a flip-out bullet punch. You've got a fuel window, easy adjustment, all for the low price of $39.99. That is the Excalibur by Lotus. Now that I really study this lighter, like Ed Sullivan says, where's the gas go? <laughs> On either side of the gap. Wow. Yeah. I don't know if it's possible this has a big gas tank. It does. It could be a medium ass tank. Yeah. Because I mean, the cutting mechanism is so large. Listen, yeah. if I was wrong... You would say so. About the big ass tank. Yeah. Alan Gold would reach out to me and say, hey, that one doesn't have a big ass tank. No, he never reached out. He doesn't. Never. I I go to him and I say, big ass tank. And he goes, yeah, it's not a thing. (laughs) That's what he says to me. Um, This cigar was such a monster. Um, it, it's just amazing that it, it, to this next generation, it's it, now it becomes a new cigar again. And bring it back. They certainly made it look different. Um, I saw some renditions as it went on. I'm glad. M- remember the gold didn't have uh, anything in there. It was good. And uh, what does it say in here? Can you read? Well, it's- that's the problem. It's, yeah. It reflects too much light. Something about For us old dudes, and I think Jonathan is part of that. San Andreas The Valley. original San Andreas Valley cigar. Oh, all right. Mm-hmm. Very hard to read, but Tiamo, you can see big and bright, the Toro. Hmm. And I'd like to go back to see. This Toro was a 52, you said, Jonathan? Yeah. I think it was a 50. Yeah, I'm almost certain. It, it was, was definitely, a 50. it was a 6 by 50. The original. Yeah. So that's what I'm thinking anyway, but. A um, little, a little, little touch of cinnamon, but there, there is definitely the earthy component <coughs> that is the, the major flavor. There's a little sweetness in there. With that cinnamon. Every major cigar in those days, in the 80s, had San Andreas in it. Usually as a binder. Mm-hmm. But there was only Tiamo that was the, you know, okay, we're going to use. And the, the story was that I had heard in those days is the only export that they could do was raw tobacco or a finished product, was, mm. which was all theirs. I don't know if it was actually true because since then the Torrents have made cigars that use other tobacco right. uh, within them. Um, but this was the killer. This was the meaning that they couldn't import tobacco. Maybe to make a blend, yeah. but they, yeah. they could export it or export cigars. Yeah, so, so that was the deal with that anyway. All right, let's take a peek into the asylum now from our friends at Asylum Cigars. It's time for news from the insane asylum. Odd and sometimes historic news stories that are too insane to be true. Or, or are, are they? they? Brought to you by Asylum Cigars. Take no prisoners. Asylum Cigars are truly flavorful, medium-bodied Nicaraguan cigars with sizes ranging from 4 inches by 44 to the absolutely insane 8 inch by 80. Asylum Cigars. (laughs) (laughs) We've all heard several 
Bill Murray stories about yeah. him doing wild and crazy sure, shit. Yeah. Showing up at parties and weddings. This one might take the cake. Ooh, what, he's coming to the expo? Legendary yeah. American actor and comedian Bill Murray once drove a taxi while the driver played saxophone in the back seat. The driver mentioned that he had to work 14 hours a day and never got time to play the saxophone. So Bill Murray jumped in the front seat and drove the car while the driver played the sax all the way to Sal- while the while the driver played the Sal- sax. Alito, mm-hmm. the, the driver of the car got in the back seat with his saxophone okay. and played the saxophone for Bill Murray, who was driving the taxi that he was paying to be in. Okay. They even stopped in between for a barbecue treat, and that's not only insane, that's a sign. There's a movie on this of showing really? Bill Murray. Yeah, it's on one of those streaming networks huh. and stuff, and I watched it, and there was Bill Murray showing up at a college yeah. dorm party. A people's wedding. barbecues, he, he just there. walks in and starts yeah. eating. It's crazy. Yeah. Huh. It's worth it. It's worth uh, uh, checking that show out. Um, okay, the after show, uh, immediately following the show, uh, will air on Wednesday? Yeah. You ask that every week. <laughs> it's yeah. always Wednesday. Yeah, because Ed knows because he, he's the one that posts it. Do you the one that posts it? Well, I post it on the MeWe on Tuesdays, Tuesdays. And then Wednesday, Wednesday, it releases at 4 a.m. Eastern Standard 4 Time. Which is when you wake up. Yeah. 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 I want it to be there when I wake up. All right. So uh, name changes in the cigar industry. There's been a lot of name changes going on in the industry. It makes me wonder what, what is going on and why is that happening. Uh, so we will uh, have that on the after show. Um, normally, we do, do a show every week. And every once in a while, we have an oddball show that shows up. That oddball show is this Tuesday night, February 7th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. This Tuesday night, February 27th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, the Cigar Authority presents the press conference for the New England Cigar Expo 2024. Mm. We have got a lot of information, and we have almost every detail. Hopefully by Tuesday we'll have every detail, but we'll tell you what's going to happen, how you can get tickets. I got a question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because I found out about this by reading the show notes. So am I not coming to that? Would prefer you not. <laughs> well, I asked Ed, he said, I don't think you're supposed to be there, and I don't want to not be here if I'm supposed to be here, but I learned about it on the show. You don't have to be here. All right. If I didn't think so, you, you're but... You're not removed from it. You know, you... No, no, I'm happy to have the night off. I, yeah. I'll come in if you need me to come in. Thank you. Uh, no, yeah, because... But you, you and Dan you... should have it. Yeah. All right. The, Dan has most of the details. Uh, we'll get uh, um, after we, Tuesdays. We do the ash holes. Yeah. And Ed Sullivan is usually here, and he says, "Oh, beautiful. We'll do it in the middle of the day." But I said, "I'd rather do it if you don't mind at seven o'clock at night," which you agreed to. Yeah, I, I, did. I took it as a shot of. It's of, very, very late. But yeah. I, I Does that mean you're going to come in a little late? <clears throat> no. Okay. No. No. I. I got a full we'll day. We'll have our normal, our normal cigar at 9 <coughs> o'clock in the morning. Yeah, you know. Um, We're going to have steak. Chef Charlie's going to be here Tuesday making those steaks yeah. for us. Except he does. Well, should I donate mine into the cause? I you can. You should. All right. Yeah, I mean, let's have them cook. Well, they handed out the steaks, and then the two of you and Chef Charlie started talking about cooking your steaks for lunch. And yeah, I already had my steak put out backs, but I can take it from out back and put it with yours. Okay. Yeah, I mean, because you took the biggest one. He handed me that one. I mean, I checked. They're, they're all big. They're, they're friggin' large. massive. I believe Jonathan's is 2.97 pounds. Yeah. Ours are like 2.75. Yeah. So he's well, almost pick, a quarter pound more. You take the smallest one. He Small handed half. me that one. <laughs> all right. <laughs> you know how he is. Well, oh, you got a gift, and I gave it away. <laughs> mm. Yeah. But you guys didn't get a fly. It's no. True. And you will never use that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're sp- – I agree with you. I yeah, think that's it's a, more of a display that's, one. That's to show everybody that you're a fly fisherman, even yeah. though you're not. But I'm not. I'm that's real. okay. You're not really lying to them. You're just – I'm going to put it up there. If you come into my office, you're going to see this slide. And you're going to say, what's up with that? And I say, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> what am I supposed to do with this? But th- this guy spent hours and hours. What did he say? Ten, ten hours. hours. Ten hours to, to uh, tie that. Ten hours to, t- to tie it. There's no possible way that there's any ROI on that. I know that the actual 
the pieces of it probably cost him 50 cents total, but the, the amount of time that it took him to do it. Why? Why, why can't I do that in five minutes? I, I mean, you gotta, you gotta know the techniques. There's certain ways to tie those knots so that it doesn't come off the, the hook. Yeah, there's got to be some. I'm going to look into some fly fishing. You need, you, need those, you need the pieces of the bifocal that sit on the tip of your nose and the tweezers. Do you? To get well, that's the thing. I wouldn't be able to see it, right? You Do you think you have it. a new hobby? No. Not with these arthritis hands and terrible vision. And sausage fingers. It's not going to work. Yeah, it's not, just not going to work. Um, all right, let's get to it. It's time for the Fave Five, and it's brought to you by McAuliffe Cigars. Time for the McAuliffe Fave Five, brought to you by McAuliffe Cigars. Smoke five McAuliffe Cigars and be entered to win $300 in gift certificates weekly. Cut That's the shit. That's five $50 <laughs> gift certificates and an additional five $10 gift certificates for your friends. In December, all winners will be put back and entered to win the grand prize. A trip for two to next year's McAuliffe Open House in Texas. Simply go to McAuliffeCigars.com slash TCA for more information. That's McAuliffeCigars.com slash TCA. Five answers on the board. We'll see who gets the best one. Name your favorite thing to do at parties. Green. Leave. Leave is not an answer. It is my favorite thing to do. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a solid answer. <laughs> Uh, you haven't buzzed. You can't talk. I'm going to say uh, that drinking. Drinking is number three. What do you got for You should have said dancing. Can you beat that? Nobody dances at parties. Oh, yeah, they do. Um, what did he say? Drinking? He said drinking. Eating. Eating is number four. So I win. I can turn this off. No. Nope. Can you get a number one? What's the number one here? Um, chatting. Or talking. Talking, number two. Uh, I can't believe it. Effing. No. Getting dressed up. Singing is number five. You're at a party, music playing. You just playing, start singing? singing it. Eating is number four. Drinking is number three. Talking is number two. And number one is dancing. Yes. How did you not say yes. dancing? I thought I did. Because nobody does that at parties. You have dance parties. I, That's what you do. I said dancing, and he said nobody dances at parties. This is true. You Were you that. not here? I didn't hear that. <laughs> Ed Sullivan, you know the rules. It doesn't count if he doesn't hear I you. understand. I should have talked louder. Oh, my God. I still think leave is the best yeah, answer. Yeah, that is the best answer. I, I award you all of the points. Thank you. You can have that game. I win. We're smoking Tiamo Toro. So nostalgic to me. I just don't, I don't understand why it's so nostalgic because it doesn't seem like a flavor profile you would have enjoyed. I never liked it. <laughs> okay, so other than the fact that it's sold by the metric shit ton. Oh, I get it now. Never mind. There we go. I never liked it, and I was always so curious. Ed, Sullivan, Ed Santa Maria, if you'll listen, he's the buyer at Two Guys Smoke Shop. And I remember when Did he, he like them? No, and we <laughs> would go to... Tiamo every single year and smoke it and say, come on, let's smoke a Tiamo, trying to figure out why is it so popular, this earthiness, so strong earthiness to it, and it's not so strong earthiness now, but it's earthy still. It's earthy. Uh, it's, it's in that spectrum. If you look at the, at the flavor wheel, you could, you could look at earth and you could say right. um, mushroom, graphite, minerals, must, salt. Yeah. Well, so you got Domino's Pizza is probably the number one selling chain pizza. It is not a good pizza, but it is consistent. The spice Those is not overly like it, saucy. Loved it. It's it's not a bad pizza. No, it's not it's not that no. it's a bad pizza, but it's it's a chain pizza and it's yeah. it's the same everywhere you go. It's not like you could have a favorite Domino's. Oh, this Domino's makes pizza like shit. They all taste exactly the same. They're using the same sauce, which is a sauce. It's not spicy. Huh. It doesn't take any chances. It's just a pizza. And this Speaking is a cigar. Of Pizza. Are you serving pizza at the father son dinner this year? I didn't think of that. Oh, that's a thing, huh? Hang on a second. What the hell? Because Eduardo Fernandez <laughs> had owned what, 1,100 pizza it's restaurants? Something like that, yeah. How, how could you do that with a lot of people, though? I don't know. What about the pizza truck? Well, you know what? They've had, had pizza for the show. 
Yeah, I could do that. Yeah, I won't be here, but... Oh, you're not even coming no. to that. What the hell? I got to go to Europe. Did we get coverage or not? We don't know. You don't know yet. We don't. He, he, there may be no show. No. Jonathan can do it. He's going to write it up for me. How to do if it? He, if he has to do it, he has to if do he it. he has I mean, to, the yeah. show must go on, as you know. Well, I know that. But right now, it's time to take a break. And when we come back, we got a prize to give away. We got the I best got four email emails. of the week. I got four emails. I got to go find the, uh, the lotion, too, four. because one of the emails came in a little late, but it got in. And it's somebody and, here? And it's someone here. Oh, my God. They, they could win the lotion. They could win the lotion. Whoa. So the big, big Gomans here. Stick around. We're live in the Toscano Soundstage, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Introducing Blackened Cigars, M81 by Drew Estate. A dark, bold, and unapologetic cigar collaboration. My job is all about taste. So when James mentioned he wanted to create an exclusive cigar, I was stoked. Like Metallica, Drew Estate has some of the most hardcore fans out there. I've known Rob Dietrich for years. And when he approached me to collaborate on this, we couldn't be more excited. I mean Metallica, Black and & Whiskey, and Drew Estate, what could be a better passion project? We all came up with the vision of what a blackened M81 cigar would look and taste like. M81 Metallica formed in 1981, as you can see right here, just so I don't forget. <laughs> and now you won't forget because it's on this. We needed to craft a cigar unlike anything in our portfolio. One that would take cigar fans on the deepest, darkest, heaviest journey into the mystical world of Maduro. Full bodied with notes of espresso, leather, and dark chocolate. A wrapper, a binder, a filler that is all Maduro, and they are all grown in separate places. You talk about a heavy leaf cigar. This is beyond passion. This shit is straight amplification. Blackened Cigar M81 by Drew Estate is bold, rich, and powerful enough to satisfy the most experienced cigar connoisseur, but also balanced that new cigar lovers can enjoy its tantalizing smoking experience as well. Blackened Cigars M81 by Drew Estate. Since 1989, Nestor and Mariana Miranda have subscribed to one family, one vision, with Miami Cigar & Company. Since their inception, the Miranda family has fulfilled their dream by creating some of the best cigars on the market today. Cigars like Nestor Miranda Special Selection, which is produced in Nicaragua, featuring an oily Nicaraguan Havana wrapper that the Cigar Authority named their 2019 Cigar of the Year. And the Don Lino Africa, which celebrates Nestor's love of big game animals. These soft box-pressed cigars feature an authentic Cameroon binder, which creates delicious nuances and crescendos. Miami Cigar invites you to try these brands at your favorite tobacconist. You only have one life. How will you live yours? Experience the rich tradition of the legendary H. Upman brand with the latest addition to their iconic 1844 line. The H. Upman 1844 Añejo uses a rich, well-balanced blend of Nicaraguan, Honduran, and Dominican tobaccos and an extra-aged wrapper that offers a deep aroma with a bold finish. The H. Upman 1844 Añejo is sure to please adult smokers looking for a delicious, handmade, premium smoke that is aged to perfection. Surgeon General warning, tobacco use increases the risk of infertility, stillbirth, and low birth weight. HVC, hot cakes. Anybody here want to smoke some hot cakes? Cakes. Hot cakes, HVC's got cigars for sale. You can buy them in a single or a box of 25 HVC hot cakes. They really satisfy selling cakes. Hot cakes, you get them from the cigar man. He sells cigars, one or the other. If you smoke HVC, you'll never buy another selling cakes. Hot cakes, 
You get them from the Cigar Man. HVC Hotcakes are premium cigars. Featuring a San Andreas Maduro wrapper, Nicaraguan Corojo binder grown in Jalapa, and Nicaraguan filler tobaccos, including a leaf of Corojo from 2006 Maduro, which makes this blend pop. Expect rich notes of dark chocolate, espresso, and spice. It's so friggin' good. Selling cakes, hot cakes, you get them from the Cigar Man. Hey, this is Henderson Ventura from Adventura Cigars, and you are listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. And we are back, powered by the West Tampa Tobacco Company, featuring West Tampa Black, White, and Red, West Tampa Cigars, Passion with a Purpose. And uh, hotcakes, you were saying hotcakes, we got flapjack beer. That should pair with hotcakes, right? right? You'll have to try. I'm not going to. No? No. I mean, the reviews were pretty bad on the beer. Yeah. It was like three were terrible, and one was drinkable for... Like, like half two, a one? Two more sips. Two you know, more. they're high alcohol content, you know. <clears throat> I don't see where it is, but somebody was saying very high alcohol content for a beer. I want to give a shout out. We apparently have listeners in the uh, 8th District Marine Corps. Whoa. So, thank you, Marines. So, like, yes. manly Always listeners. Always thank you. Yeah. Real, good. Real, men. Real, Real men. men. Real men. Real men. Yeah. Instead of this thing we, facade we put on. With your fly fisherman's uh, toy over That's there. That's a man thing, too. Is it? Yeah. You didn't think so. You insulted that poor guy. No, I just thought it was an odd gift for one man to give another. <laughs> a fly? Yeah. Fly. What if it was just like a dead house fly? Would that be a more manly gift? I like how Ed Sullivan can slyly yeah. eat while he's talking. <laughs> he doesn't smack he's, his lips. He's eating, he's smoking out the cigars. Uh, no, just... no, I'm smoking this one now. Yeah, what do you think? I think um, the original Te Amo tasted like you had a mouthful of mud. This, this one, is better. 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 It's got an earthy component to it, but it's, it's a got very that, well balanced very cigar. Much more balanced. I want to know you know, the, the person that tests us on is the diehard. Padrone smokers. Take hmm. a diehard Padrone. It's not going to be the same thing. Two, three thousand. That's mostly Nicaraguan with a hint of earth. Yeah. There's. Just try it. No but way. They won't. Wait, leave. They won't trust me ever again. You know, say, I want give it to them. Say I want to give you one of these, but you got to report back to me what you thought of it. Okay. Because that's who the customer is. I think. That's what ended up happening. That was the the shift. Take nothing away from Padron, but I can't but smoke Padron all the time either. They, the Padron people never change, though. That's the problem. Either the, the Tiamo people. Well, they had to. It went away. Well, then yes. they died. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> all right. We got a prize to give away brought to you by the folks at Onyx. They're Onyx. giving away a koozie, a hat, a lighter, a cutter, and a money clip. Koozie is a, a word that sounds dirty. And I'm giving away lotion. If the person that wins... Is, is present. Is what present. kind of lotion? I don't know. All right. That lotion. Mm -hmm. And it'll be done. The lotion discussion will be over. Well, we'll be out of lotion, right? No, yeah. no, no. You just identified it as something that bothers you. Now I will buy <laughs> more, more, more lotion. <laughs> <laughs> the bottles will just get bigger. I'm not saying that I'm bothered by it. I'm saying that I'm asking a question. Will it be gone? No, no, no. 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 I'm going to always make meatballs, and I'm always <laughs> going to have lotion. All right. I got... No less than nine emails that all said basically the same thing. What did Dave do? So you picked the best one. Yeah, what did I do wrong? <laughs> the following message was submitted through the Contact Us page of the CigarAuthority.com. Dave, please stop. <laughs> I knew it. I'm a long time, 30 year user of oh, both God. weed and Another cigars. Pothead. Another pothead. No, th th what's interesting is that it, they're, they're catching on to this later and later. Because they're really potheads. It took them too long to listen to the show. And so right. they're, they're a couple of weeks behind. But that's Well, okay. and they forget things, too. <laughs> and you got a bunch of them on it, so one's enough. I get it. You, you, Please you like... listen <laughs> yeah. and take this from a user. The two have nothing to do with each other except for the manner in which they are ingested. I've never chosen between the two. When I sit to smoke a cigar, it's an event. Smoking marijuana is unplugging. They are both relaxing, but in very different ways. A cigar takes 45 minutes to an hour. 
Marijuana takes 45 seconds. Ooh. It's like saying bottled water sales are cutting into bourbon sales. Please stop. Wow. So he's not going to win, but that's okay. Well, you're not going to vote for him. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't vote for him because it wasn't the final yeah, one. It wasn't the best email. And you say you're going to four of them, right? I got four. All right. So uh, also submitted through the Contact Us page. That Pot guy head. has no... no Pot Pot head. Head. <laughs> yeah, he didn't put his name down. Well, he put the email is dave at stoptalking.com. So <laughs> we'll, we'll say he's Dave. <laughs> No, he's pothead. Yeah. All right, pothead. Uh, Jim writes through the contact us page of thecigarauthority.com. The definitive answer to the lighter action debate. Okay, here it is. Greetings, gentlemen, and Mr. J. I believe I have the answer to the debate over, the debate over how lighter debate. actions are defined. First of all, everyone is going about it the wrong way, Ooh. trying to relate the lighters to guns. Yeah. Since Mr. J is in touch with his feminine side, he can't relate to that analogy. Mm -hmm. I have a gun on right now. Instead, let's relate to the household cleaning products so it's everyone not, that dances with men... To be fair, it's not much of a gun. No, it's not manly. No, uh, it's, a, it's when, a lady gun. <laughs> what is that, the lady smith that you carry? <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's relate to household cleaning products so anyone that dances with men cannot argue the facts or redefine them the way they want. If we all had in this world, if all we had in this world were single action cleaning products, we would be forced to use multiple products on every surface of our house. But luckily we have double action cleaners that both clean and disinfect all with one push of the spray button is that or like one the squeeze of is the, that like spray the shampoo, trigger shampoo with the conditioner built into that's it. Bullshit. Yeah. I don't it's buy bullshit. that. That's no. part plus. Well, that's what you say, Jonathan, because you're bald. It's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I have chest hair. Yeah. <laughs> Barely. Not to mention ones that clean, disinfect, and deodorize. But I haven't seen a triple action lighter that does three things with one push of the button, so we won't get into that. I believe this definition is arguably something that everyone can agree on. All right. Except for me. That's Jim. Toothpaste that whitens and cleans your teeth. So, um, That's bullshit. You don't use the one with that stripe in it, right? No. No, it's ridiculous. John, the Scotsman from Kuwait, is in the audience right now. Ah! Huh. Hi, guys, and Mr. Hi. J. I have an idea regarding Cigar of the Year. Instead of announcing the contenders and then picking a winner, I feel like there could be more to it. Hmm. My idea would be to pick eight cigars as contenders and then do a tournament, eventually, and eventually ending up with the Cigar of the Year. Eight cigars would mean four quarterfinals. You could even do the draw on the show. You could then do each of the quarterfinals on the show, smoking the cigars and talking about why they were contenders, and pick the cigar which moves on to the semifinals using all of the different criteria used to evaluate the different cigars. Once you have four that won their quarterfinal, you could do the draw for semifinals and then smoke them on the show to see which two cigars make it to the final. Well, well who's, who's uh, judging this? The audience, or is it us? Uh, based on this email, I would say it's us. Well, you could ask the us? person who wrote the email. Yeah. I can. He's sitting right there. Yeah. Well, everyone. Everybody. People just write in. The whole world. A, yeah, it's just going to be a, whatever people vote for, it's going to be a fan favorite. But that's not what it is. No. You're not doing this, right? No. I knew it. I wanted you to win, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I tried for you, John. Yeah, bingo says too much. I want that damn lotion. Bingo going. says too much math for Dave. No, it's not because a lot it's of a, people do it. It's a it's, very different thing. Yeah, like uh, is, Cigar Pulpit does a popularity yeah, contest. Yeah, popularity contest is the word I was looking for. Brian writes through the contact us page of thecigarauthority.com. Dear cue ball, sausage fingers, and hospice Ed. <laughs> hospice, I like that. <laughs> he was already going to be the winner for me right yeah. there. Oh, so is this out that you have, your heart rate is not? No. Then how does he know this? Was he doesn't that? until you just said it now, jackass. Oh, well, <laughs> probably because I sounded like I was dying the well, last was couple sick. of shows. Yeah. Sick. <laughs> May I turns out, turns out I'm dying, <laughs> you know. Uh, I'd have We're all dying. I know. Yeah. Jonathan, could you read this already? What's it's taken name? forever. What's his his name's name? Brian. Bro. If you'd spent less time talking and more time listening, you'd catch on to this stuff. All Is right. he crying, Brian? I'd have to say I was surprised last week. Not only did I finally catch a live show, but the dancing wannabe gigolo read my first letter to you guys, and I won. 
which would have been the week before my dumbass sent the email to twoguyscigars.com, not the cigarauthority.com. I remember that. I must have been dazed and confused with all the wacky tobacco talk. Oh, boy. Anyway, He's probably a he smokes the <laughs> yep, they I have another stuff. idea for the show, not just a segment, <laughs> and forgive me if this has been done before. I have better things to do than catch up on 14 years of shows. Really? LOL. You talk a lot about individual cigars and flavor notes and such, uh, the difference from each blend. How about a show smoking the same cigar but in different sizes? I work part-time at a cigar shop, and that's something we often discuss. I'll suggest a cigar, and they typically buy the Robusto because they are broke-ass hoes, which <laughs> I have often said will taste a little different at times from the Gordo sizes I typically smoke. Yes, Mr. J, you dirty-minded freak. I like big things in my mouth, too. See, that's just unnecessary. Freak. Uh, Garofalo, get your ass on an episode of The Pulpit already. Mr. Fancy Pants and Father Time can make time, so can you. He's been on there. He hasn't been on in a while. Well, he's important. He's not like us. I'm not liking anything I'm hearing today. <laughs> <laughs> You're just not voting? Or? Man. What, what did the second guy, Jim, say? Uh, Jim was the cleaning products. Double action thing. That's bullshit with the yeah. shampoo thing. The uh. pothead. We got John here <laughs> trying to change the whole 40 years of the uh, cigar of the year. And then Brian. Wow. And you had to put four in. Four bags. Well, I had the three already up here. I wasn't going through the rigmarole of picking which one, so I just threw John's in there. What do you like, Ed Sullivan? I don't like anything. You don't like it either? I mean, that's just general, not yes. even about this. Okay. Um, I, I guess we'll go with the last one. I like the salutation All right, on that so I don't one. even have to vote, so Brian gets that it. That was the one with the good salutation, right? Yes, hospice ed. Yeah, hospice ed. I like that. We'll you go liked with it. it. Sure. Cue ball... Cue fat ball, finger, Dave, fat Dave, finger, Dave. hospice. See, you, you, and then you award them a prize, and then you, you're, you're... Reinforcing that behavior. Yes. Yeah, I don't see anything like wrong with the behavior. No? All right. Mm. So uh, we have Cigar School coming up, and I say this because it's March 8th. You're going to have to get it in when this week. When is that? March 8th. When is March 8th? It's yeah. Friday, March 8th. It's a Friday. PM. It's a Friday. Oh, my God. Am I going? You agreed. All right, then I'll be there. All right. Look at what we're doing to you. But then you got time coming off. Anyway, yep. Friday, March 8th will be Cigar School. You got to go to the cigarauthority.com and you got to buy one of the packages. Why well, I say your deadline is like now is because we need a week to get it to you, so just in case. So mm -hmm. you should do it now. Um, if you buy, for, for instance, uh, a kit for just a single person doing it, you're going to get um, three Garofalos, a Connecticut, a Sun Grown, and a Maduro, double blade cutter, jet flame lighter, flavor wheel, and a link to the Cigar School to participate live or help me out on this. All right, I'll help you. After it's over, say the they same, could, same link. They'll use the same link and be able to get onto it. Absolutely. So if they wanted to watch it multiple times, they could. Yes, they can. Yeah. They can keep buying packs in perpetuity. Yeah. And just keep doing it over and over until they get it right. right. So, and then you can buy a double pack, you can buy a triple pack, or you can buy a night out with the guys or girls, and that's going to be uh, eight different people can do it. We've sold, I can't believe, hundreds of these things. No way. Hundreds. And wow. um, now I feel a lot of pressure, so it actually has to work. Huh? It has to work. Wow. It has to work. So that will be Friday, March 8th, 7 p.m. Eastern is when it starts. It lasts about two hours. Jonathan tends to push it along. Don't push it along. They pay to be here. Usually we give it away for charities and stuff. But this it, is why I get called <laughs> Maduro Jonathan, because you say shit that's not true. All right. I keep you on task. All right. The, the proper way to cut a cigar so it never unravels when and you can taste it for flavor. How do we pick the flavor notes out? It's typically because you've cut it or lit it wrong. Correct. We're going to show you the proper way to do that so you can really taste the tobacco. Answer the old age old question, does size really matter? Why Ooh. wine and cigars are so similar? Find out what's missing. The autonomy of cigars. Anatomy. Anatomy, thank you. <laughs> Uh, and Ed Sullivan will be here. They're autonomous, too. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll be here to, to correct any. Um, 
we will dissect the cigar for you and oh, explain. Oh, this it. is perfect because you're going to be there too. Yeah. So when he starts telling the story that I just finished, right. and I say, "Hey, you can move it along now." He won't feel like I'm being ru- he's being rushed because you can say, "Well, Jonathan just said that." Yeah. What okay. happens is when you start talking, I go to check other things. <laughs> yeah. That you're talking, that I get a second a breather, and then I'm not listening to what you are, are saying. Most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> the history of cigars and the math behind it, the real health associated with cigars, you'll be pleasantly surprised. Uh, this will be a time to bring your significant other in if mm-hmm. they're busting your balls about cigars on for you. Or you could just do, show them that part on the replay. Yeah. Because the, the significant other may not want to see the whole yeah. mess. And um, how you can become the Cigar Authority and take Mr. Jonathan's spot. Oh, I love, wow. how, I love how I'm going to be there, yes. <laughs> helping to educate you. I wouldn't do it behind your back. Me. I wouldn't do it behind your back. No, that's fair. But anyway, go to CigarAuthority.com on the right-hand side. You'll see it. Sign up. Uh, I would say uh, you got to do it now or never, right? It's now or never. Yeah, this is the time to do it. Uh, so do that. And um, a big thank you to all the folks out there that are liking and sharing uh, the podcast, I see lots of shares mm. on the on the video thing on Facebook. People will hit share and stuff. Very nice when people do that. Sharing is it, caring. They let their, their other friends that maybe smoke cigars know that it's out there, right? It's great. Because we keep growing, so it's amazing, and that's why it's amazing. All right, we got a um, stars review, Ed Sullivan. Do we? We do. And would it be a Toro size? I don't know. That's appropriate. Toro, would right? Would be good. That's All right, then from. we'll make it a Toro. This one is the Big Poppy Toro. Okay. You've Big heard Poppy, of it. Big Poppy, David Ortiz. You've absolutely. smoked it. Um, the Artista Factory. You know, what they're picking up when they start uh, smoking this is cinnamon, spice, and some salt. And everything nice. And the essence of walnut. Okay. Yeah. So it's a little nutty. Some uh, floral undertones. Reminiscent of black tea. Oh. You see where they're going with this? Okay. There's a lot of flavors happening. As you move on, you get some sourdough pretzel notes. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot happening here. They're getting Uh, really good. They're getting really good with descriptives and stuff. Yeah. Uh, Subtle sweetness as it goes along, and this rated very well at 90.14. All right. All right. Um, Again... I don't know, the strength, 4.07. I, I always thought it was more straight up medium, but whatever. Yeah, they're a little low, but we're going to fix that coming up soon with, with our strength meter. Oh, my uh, God. That's coming in the that, future. That's going to fix pretty much all problems in the world, right? It, it, it is. We'll, we'll never have this. They'll be all set. You'll watch well, the ratings go does up. Does the strength meter resolve the uh, Middle East problems, or we're not it sure? It won't hurt. It won't hurt. No. That's it good. Won't, it won't hurt. So uh, we'll get to that. Right now, it's time for this classic day in classic history, and it's brought to you by Classic Cigars. Hey, what about the 65 Mustang? Classic, no doubt about it. It's in the hole! That's Caddyshack, and that's a classic. Coffee, too cream, too sugar. Coffee regular, that's a classic. Classic cigars are true value cigars, using a classic Dominican blend and available in Connecticut, Cuban, Maduro, or Cameroon wrappers. Totally classic. Cheeseburger in Paradise. Classic. Bird vs. Magic. Classic. Classic cigars have five sizes for every walk of life. From boardrooms to barrooms, make your next meeting a classic. Make classic cigars part of your American comfort. One cut, one light, and experience classic cigars. What do you have to say, Sounds like you guys recorded that in a barroom. We did. Nice. How how else can you pull that off? Today's February 24th. February 24th. Um, What year is it? It's 2024. It is. All right. Happy and birthday to Sammy B. I'm two days late. I got him on his birthday. I would never forget. But. Oh, my God. It's your brother. But you know, today is World Bartender's Day. I did not know. So uh, we drank beer in honor ah, for it. Nice. But it's World Bartender Day. So tip your bartenders. Take care of your bartenders. As well as Tortilla Chip Day. Really? So you could go to the bar, have some tortilla chips, and tip your bartender. T- t- Sounds like a plan. Yeah, let's All do right. it. All right. I have four questions and one tiebreaker. 
Ed Sullivan as our champion? Yeah, Obviously. Usually, except for the end of the year when Jonathan cheats. Yeah. Okay, so four and one tiebreaker to Ed Sullivan. American businessman Steve Jobs, co-founder of Apple Inc., and the charismatic pioneer of the personal computer era, was born today. He was born today. What year? Um, uh, Steve Jobs. See. That's a tough one. 1954. 54, he says. 52. 52. Ed Sullivan, point at 54. 55 was the uh. answer. But a point, nevertheless. Over to Mr. Jonathan. The regime of Fidel Castro adopted to the Constitution of Cuba, which mandated the operation of one and only political party, the Communist Party of Cuba. It's not when it started. He adopted the Communist Party today. Right. Not took over. So it would have been if, subsequent to that, likely. I would say, just right. reiterating that he doesn't jump to the obvious. Uh, I'm going to say 1957. No, I'm going to go 1960. 60 would be even weak, but it's 76. Well, whatever, so I won. That's right. Point for Ed Sullivan. I was trying to get you to go further than after they took over. Well, I, I thought it would be before that. No, I thought he was trying to trick me into going over, so I stayed low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, but I tried to give you a hint, Jonathan. No, you didn't. <laughs> that did. was the most obscure hint I've ever heard. On to Ed Sullivan. Russia began to invade Ukraine and described by President Putin as a special military operation. Um, what happened today? In 2022. 2022, he says. 2021. 2021. 2022 for two points, Ed Sullivan. Wow, this is a disgusting travesty <laughs> going on here. Disgusting. There's only four questions, and it's four to zero. So huh. far, one question left and a tiebreaker, just yeah. in case you want to rub it in. Yeah. It probably won't be necessary. I'm going to go back to Fidel Castro for you, Mr. Jonathan. Oh, oh great. He's Fidel a scholar. Care to give me any hints that won't be hints at all? <laughs> yes. Okay. Fidel Castro stepped down as president of Cuba after keeping his position for over 30 years. Uh, There's a lot of hints there. Mm. There's a lot of hints. A lot of hints? 2014. It's going to be before that, I think. Um, 2001. For the point, shout out, 2008. We have five to nothing. Should we just throw this last one in? Yeah, why Might not? As well. <laughs> okay. Queen Elizabeth II knighted Elton John for his charitable Sir work. Elton John. Sir Elton Call me John. sir, God damn it. He just did Ringo Starr this week. Really? Ringo Starr just got... Uh, it's just because he lived so long, they yeah. said, and they felt bad. Yeah. Um, Elton John was probably relatively early, 1992. I have 91 written down. 91. Ed Sullivan, 92, 98. Yeah. All right. Six to nothing. It's an all-time record so, shutout, maybe. Like no, I think I've, left in the wind. There were some where I got Candles a lot of twos. Yeah. Candles in the wind. Candles? That was a song they did for... That's why I said it. Oh, is that it? Yeah. Oh. Oh. It was, it you? I was being punny. All right. Oh, you are punny. All right. Tiamo Toro. Tiamo Toro. So, I was expecting it to be much worse. <laughs> this is a cigar that I could find myself going back to, say, once a month. It's a little too much of one thing, but it is not a bad cigar. So, if... Yeah. If I, you like that earthy component, then this is something that you could gravitate it's a, toward. It's a nice flavor. What it's going to lack is some complexity because, mm. you know, it's all Mexican. I feel like um, heavy in the chest. Like, a, Well, that's called a heart attack. Dave. Really? Is that yeah. what it is? In my arm is a little... Do we, yeah, we got a medical professional in the audience. No, but I feel like it's... We're going to need some mouth-to-mouth uh, mouth up here stat. It's a lot stronger than it appears to be. Mm-hmm. They're a lot stronger. Would you say it's an eight? No. No way. Good Lord, no. Barely a six. Nicotine <clears throat> strength. Barely a six. It's a lot stronger. No. No. Your strength will meet us off. I, I think the beer threw you off. You're not used Between to that. Beer and strong cigars? Yeah. Yeah. We got to have you checked out soon. All right. Uh, 
I'll be checked out later on. I'm checking out now. Uh, that is it for the show next week. Survey says, and uh, this is your last chance to let us know your answers. Are you, are you going to do that before every answer? Survey says. Maybe. If it, if it annoys you guys, <laughs> possibly. Uh, it is your last chance to answer. Go to thecigarauthority.com, and you'll see the survey up there. We will reveal the answers of the survey next week. And uh, we're going to go over some details that we told you during the um, press conference about the New England Cigar mm. Expo. Things are coming in. I know. I don't know if I'll get to everything by Tuesday that I'll but get everything. But You know I care about the food trucks, and that's not locked down yet. Correct. Oh, boy. So... Hopefully it'll be by Tuesday. If it isn't, we'll get it for Saturday. Until then, you've been listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. And it's quite possible that you learned something today which makes you The Cigar Authority. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, 